I've tried it once or twice It's easy to sound cheesy And I tend to use cliches But I like to try to write one for you I would probably try to start with the word distance Bailey, you and I, we both know what that means From the 80 to the 94 and up by 70 always worth the drive cause with you is where I want to be from the Pacific to the hills of Tennessee we can learn together who God made us to be I want forever forever you and me somebody wrote a book a while ago wrote about a man who loved the world the man said do not worry and seek my kingdom first cause I can give you everything you need and I guess that what I'm saying now is this I see him reflected in your eyes and if I could choose anyone to seek his kingdom I would choose you, I would choose you, cause with you is where I want to be, from the Pacific to the hills of Tennessee, we can learn together who God made us to be, I want forever, forever tell you that life with me is easy I'm not perfect and I don't have lots of money I'm pretty grumpy when I'm hungry and I'm still learning to share but I'd like to learn to be like him with you cause with you is where I want to be from the Pacific to the hills of Tennessee we can learn together who God made us to be. I want forever, forever you and me. Because with you is where I want to be. From the Pacific to the hills of Tennessee. We can learn together who God made us to be. I want forever, forever. tried it once or twice it's easy to sound cheesy and I tend to use cliches but I like to try to write one for you I would probably try to start with the word distance Bailey you and I we both know what that means from the 80 to the 94 and up by 70 always worth the drive cause with you is where I want to be from the Pacific to the hills of Tennessee we can learn together who God made us to be I want forever forever you and me somebody wrote a book a while ago wrote about a man who loved the world the man said do not worry and seek my kingdom first cause I can give you everything you need and I guess that what I'm saying now is this I see him reflected in your eyes 
If I could choose anyone to seek his kingdom with, I would choose you. I would choose you. Cause with you is where I want to be. From that Pacific to the hills of Tennessee, we can learn together who God made us to be. I want forever, forever you and me. I won't tell you that life with me is easy. I'm not perfect and I don't have lots of money. I'm pretty grumpy when I'm hungry and I'm still learning to share. To learn to be like him with you Cause with you Is where I want to be From the Pacific To the hills of Tennessee We can learn together Who God made us to be
Let us pray. Lord, it is so very good for us to be here today. And we thank you for the creation of both David and Bailey, both individually and now as a couple, as one flesh. Thank you for this time together. Bless this holy ceremony and tabernacle with us today is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 
please be seated. On behalf of the Glenn and Gallant families, thank you so much for being here today. Your presence communicates in a very, very large way how much you love and appreciate this very special couple. This time, Jaden, a cousin of David, and Evia, a special friend and past summer camper of Bailey's at Camp Ensemble, will bless us with a scripture reading. Today we will be sharing scripture reading from Matthew 6, 25 to 32. The passage reads a lot of David. It reads, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? gather in two barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are, not, are you not more of value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Um, so, therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Amen. Well, you made it. How do you feel? Yeah? Um, I saw a lot of people crying, but I think that's a good thing. I think they're, they're happy. Happy tears. Yeah, happy tears. That's, that's what I have, is happy tears. Um, just take a minute and just look around. Just, I mean, we're in no rush whatsoever. Just look at all these amazing people that are here for you, and isn't that awesome? Make me cry. I'm not trying to make you cry, because I'm trying not to cry myself, just to throw that in there, but, um, you know, Song of Solomon says three times, don't rush love. Yeah, it's really amazing. The Hebrew word is ahava, which is my favorite Hebrew word. Is that great? You can say it. It's fine. It's uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's fun. Um, it's a kind of love that isn't going anywhere. So it's not like it's, you're going to miss it. It's eternal. It's the highest form of love. And um, it's the kind that you both have here today. <clears throat> excuse me. You could have tried to rush love earlier in your lives, but you weren't looking for a cheap substitute or variation of love. You decided to wait as long as it took till God showed you who and God showed you when. And that time is now. Well, was it worth the wait? Amen. Know that all of heaven is rejoicing with you now. God loves it when his children wait on him and trust him. His ways are true and his timing is always perfect, the very best. I just have two uh, pieces of advice for you today. You know, I don't have like a big long sermon. I'm just, quite honestly, your relationship inspires me and I'm an old timer. But here's the first piece of advice. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, as the hymn says. Daily in your devotions, together and in your prayers. When drama surrounds you at home or work or at church or possibly by any of these fine people today, including myself, <laughs> Just keep your eyes on Jesus and just follow him wherever he goes. You both have big hearts. And my prayer is that you'll have the discernment to know when to help and when to walk away 
remembering that not every battle is your battle, but his. Lastly, guard your one-on-one -on -one time. Schedule it in your phones if you need to. Is there an echo? Is it just me? That seems like there is. I'll just keep going. <laughs> Schedule it in your phones if you need to, and don't mess with it. You both are givers and doers. Hmm? Thank you, Mac. That's wonderful. Nope, still there. <laughs> Do you want me, can I turn it off, or that's a bad idea? Because I can use my teacher voice. Don't do that. I'm getting a no. Okay, all right. Sorry about that. You're both givers and doers. So everyone will try to get you to commit to every good thing they come up with, with no regards to your health as a family. Don't expect them to set boundaries for you. You need to do that. And by God's grace, I know you will. Congrat congratulations on your new life together. And thank you for letting us be a part of it. Now, I know you've written your own personal vows, and I think the best men have them. Uh, at this time, yeah, I'm good. At this time, what I'd love for you to do is to share them publicly before God and these fine witnesses today. Thank you. We're good. brought you into my life. You're a beautiful gift. You're kind, consistent, and trustworthy. For all the time that I have known you, you have been quick to lift me up in prayer. You're really good at challenging me to be better, to be vulnerable, and to connect more deeply. By now you know that I am not perfect and I do not claim to be. If the firmness of our marriage depends fully on me, its success would be a lucky coincidence. But if our marriage is rooted in God, it will not fail. And so my first commitment is to, is to God, so I'm going to talk to him for a second. <clears throat> Father, I'm nothing. I can do nothing unless I give every minute of my life to you. I recognize my need of you, and I want to recommit my life to you today. Nothing in my life is off-limits off to you. When I wander, draw me close to you. When I stumble, may the blood of Jesus cover my sin. Show me my weakness and fill me with your strength. And fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I can love this daughter of yours. Teach me to love her like you do. Amen. Bailey, I love you, and I'm really excited that from now on we get to walk through the rest of our lives seeking God's kingdom first together. When you laugh, I'll laugh with you. When you're anxious and tired, I'll hold you tightly. When you're afraid, I'll walk with you toward the thing that you fear. When you grieve, I'll sit with you until the morning comes again. And when we face challenges and see no clear path ahead, I will look to and lean on Jesus. And with you at my side, I will hold the course that he lays out for us. Most of all, I'll keep giving you to God. I'll make the aim of my life to do his will, and I will love and protect you and the rest of our family as long as I have breath and blood. Whew. David, I remember.
remember sitting on that singing bench by the cafeteria at Campus Hovel four summers ago and being shocked that God was allowing me, me to have a front row seat in the work that he is doing both in and through your life. You're the answer to so many of my prayers and I know that I don't deserve the joy of walking with you through this crazy life. But I praise God for writing our story that today I get to become your wife. <laughs> I know and you know that I'm weak and selfish and can often be hangry or grumpy when I'm tired. So before I promise to be anything to you, I want to ask God to once again cleanse my heart from the sinful and selfish parts that hurt me and you and to ask him to make me more like Jesus. I commit to going to God daily, asking him to give me a new heart and to teach me to love you in a way that reflects his love for you. I promise to run to Jesus when I am weak, when I fail, and when I need an attitude adjustment. David, I love the calling God has given you and the fact that our goals and life missions align so well. Today I want to commit to support you in whatever ministry God calls you to, wherever he calls us to go. I promise to hold up your hands, lift you up in my prayers, make sure you eat and sleep, and to dive headfirst into whatever God is calling you to. I promise to be your teammate on the good days, the bad days, the hard days, every single day. And I'm so glad you're on my team too. There's no one else in the whole world I'd rather seek God's kingdom with than you. I promise to take time to communicate even when we go into meta-processing mode for hours. <laughs> I want to understand you and what you're thinking, to work through difficulties with you, and I promise to add my cheesy comic relief when it is needed. Amen. I promise to share my raspberries with you, not let too many decorative pillows into our home, and to do everything I can to make every home we live in be a place that is happy and filled with books, guitars, and tortillas. I praise God for the gift you are to me and that I get to walk by your side for the rest of my life. I love you, David, and I promise my love to you and only you forever. Do you, David James Glenn, take Bailey to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part? I do. Do you, Bailey Elizabeth Gallant, take David to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do you part. I do. As an extension of the vows that David and Bailey have just shared before God and man, they're now going to wash each other's feet as a symbol of the humility and unity they want in their home by God's grace.
How can you not believe there's a God in heaven on a day like this? Who but God could create such an amazing thing as love? I want to invite the parents to come up at this time. Parents of the bride and the groom for a prayer of blessing. I know that if you were to ask them, I know they would tell you that it seemed like just only yesterday that they brought these two home from the hospital in their arms. Each day, these parents ask the Lord to bless their child, wanting for them to love Jesus more than anything. And seeing that happen, started to ask the Lord to bring someone in their lives that would be the perfect heavenly fit, someone worthy of their child. And God has been faithful in that prayer. Amen? 
So it only makes sense on this day they would once again ask God to bless this very special couple as they start a family of their own. Thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Thank you, our kind and wonderful Heavenly Father, for your great faithfulness to each one here, but especially today to this couple, David and Bailey Glenn. Thank you so much that we got to share in this special time, and thank you for what you're going to do in them and through them and with them in the coming days and years and months. I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will surround their home with your angels in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now by the power vested in me, the state of Washington and God's church, I pronounce you man and wife. When God is joined together, let no man put asunder. Amen. Now let me get out of the way. So David... You can kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Mr. and Mrs. David Glenn.
Thank you so much for coming. And we're going to take some pictures now. So if you're a family, we'd like you to stay here in the sanctuary so we can get some shots of you. And we want to invite the rest of you to come to the loft in Chehalis. That's how I say it, right? Chehalis, all right? Uh, just down the road for the dinner. And uh, we'd love to join you there as well. So thank you again. God bless. Because I was going back to the lapel and then I, I kept echoing it off. Yeah. <laughs>